I was a vegan for 20 years. I was half dead by the time I stopped. Eating that first bite of meat was hands down the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It was horrible and it had to be done. So what I would say to people who are faced with this, it was inevitable. This is not a diet that works long-term for maintenance and repair of the human body. We are not a vegan species. Even the species that we think of as vegan are not vegan. So for instance, a cow, you think, oh, she's a vegetarian, she eats grass. Actually, 10% of their diet is, is animal products because in that grass, they're eating tons of insects and it ends up being 10% of their calories. Without those calories, they actually get really sick. They need that 10% to be from animals. And there's also, you can actually watch cows, deer, critters that we think of as either browsers or grazers. They have been seen eating things like small mammals and small birds. They will actually hunt them. They will eat them. So even the creatures that we think of as vegan are not really vegan. They're, they're actually getting animal products as well that are necessary for their, their physiological health. But all that aside, I know it's a very bad day. So the values that you hold as a vegan, the values that drove you to, to embrace veganism, they're the correct values. It's love and compassion and uh, sustainability and a longing for justice and anything that questions human hubris. I know you don't want the animals to get hurt. I, I really do know that. It's like, it was my dearest wish. It was my North Star. And the problem is no matter what you eat, animals are dying. So you might think that it's vegan because it's a head of lettuce. And having grown lettuce, I can tell you there are dead animals in that lettuce. There were animals that were killed to save that lettuce so you could eat it, whether they were rabbits or deer or slugs, you know, or all kinds of insects, they all had to die. Um, on a larger scale for that farm to be cleared, a whole bunch of animals had to be killed to make that farm to grow that lettuce. And beyond that, what lettuce wants to grow is healthy soil and what soil is made out of is dead plants and dead animals. You're not gonna grow good food without applying the amendments that Plants want that. That's what soil is. You're going to have to apply manure. You're probably going to have to apply at some point bone meal and blood meal for the minerals. And that's what's required to grow annual crops of any kind, whether it's lettuce or wheat or whatever you want. Um, they can't get them on their own. Perennials can get a lot of those. Uh, annual plants cannot. They don't have a deep enough root system. So I know, having grown my own food, I know what goes into it. And trust me, it was horrifying as a vegan to figure all this out step by step. I didn't like a single thing that I learned along the way but it's reality and you are better off facing reality. You are better off bearing up under your adult responsibilities because living in a fairy tale is, is not gonna help. So given that animals are going to die to feed you, these are our choices. There, there is no death-free option if you're a living creature. Other things are going to die to feed you. No matter who you are, whether you're a plant, whether you're an animal, whatever you are, creatures have to die for you to live. And that's a very, very hard moment, but you have to face it so you can do it well. Because our only two choices right now, really forever, our choices were only ever, the death that is part of the cycle of life, that improves the cycle of life, that supports the cycle of life, that makes it stronger and denser and lusher. And then the other death is the death that's destroying all life. And most of the foods that you're gonna eat as a vegan are honestly, those second foods because they're agricultural foods. And the question when you look at your, on your plate isn't, is there something dead on my plate? Because it's all dead. The question is what died to feed me? And if you're looking at agricultural foods, you're looking at the whole world. You're looking at the soil, you're looking at the rivers, you're looking at the aquifers, you're looking at 200 species a day. That's what died to get that food on your plate. 